Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm back at the Bricks and Minifigs store in Vancouver, Washington, and I'm joined by Kevin once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the really unique and rare products that he has in the store, and there's some really cool stuff going back several decades, some really unique things here. But of course we have this huge Star Wars set in front of us to start off with. These big Star Wars sets are always a great centerpiece, so uh, what is this that we have right here? Uh, so this is the second version of the uh, UCS Star Destroyer, and I absolutely love this build. <laughs> it's got so many fun details, yeah, particularly back in the engine section. It's, it, it is a great <laughs> model and significantly more stable than the first version. <laughs> So what are some of the kind of playable features here? I know you've got like the, the smaller ships that it came with as well. What are some of your favorite features on this one? Um, honestly, the, the Tantive 4 is one of my favorite things. I love that. I also love how they did the, the crosswork on the, the communications array up there. Uh, it's got the spinning turrets in there. Um, also on the, uh, the sides right here. Uh, it just has a lot of fun little greebled details and interesting parts usage like the little uh, tread tracks there in light gray and st stuff like that there it's just got a lot of fun yeah. details now uh, at a store like bricks and minifigs when you have a set this big in is it difficult to find a, dis a place to display this and do you have to kind of decide like obviously there's sort of the wow factor of having a set of this size but then it also takes up so much space yes uh that that definitely can be a little bit of a challenge uh this is one that kind of barely fits on our shelves um We've not actually had a uh, pre-owned UCS Falcon in for a while, and, but that one's a real issue because it's notably <laughs> wider than this one. It's wider than our shelves, so it, it can definitely be a problem. I mean, it looks really cool, but it does take up a lot of space. So that's a fantastic set to start off with. Now we move on to some other iconic designs. These are, of course, a couple modular buildings. What is this first one that we have over here? Uh, so this is Market Street, which was the second one released. It was done through the, what was it, the Lego factory yes, thing. Okay. It was like a, it was a fan designed uh, thing. It was kind of uncertain if it was a modular or wasn't this one didn't have the classic smiley faces. Uh, Factory was, I guess, a bit of a precursor to ideas in a way, and that it was sort of like fan involvement yeah, in some of the designs. Yeah, there was this one, there was like the, there was a blacksmith shop that was done, and there was a few other things. They did some trains and stuff. Um, but this one, it has a nice color scheme. I love that shade of, both shades of blue, the black, the dark blue and the, the lighter blue. Um, and then it's, yeah, it's got the little Market Street uh, with one of my favorite things of the, uh, Exoforce anime style hair <laughs> being used as a head of lettuce. Um, Shout out to Exoforce, such a fantastic theme as well. It really was, it really was. This one and the first one, Cafe Corner, don't really have an interior. They just got like stairs that go up and that's about it. Um, but uh, it is definitely a fun build and one of the harder modulars to come across these days. And then again, kind of no, not much of an interior and also not much underneath here. So it's, it is interesting to see kind of how they started out some of these designs. It almost feels like they were very much sort of experimenting and trying to decide how much effort and detail that we put into these. Yeah, uh, the, the, first, the first few were definitely focused on the exterior only. And then later they've gotten into some amazingly detailed <laughs> interiors on their uh, modulars. And then we have another example as well here. Yeah, uh, this is the Green Grocer, which was the third modular. And uh, this is another one that's uh, really iconic, uh, particularly hard one to come by. Uh, and this was the first one that had an interior, kind of. Uh, so the, the first floor is very nicely detail detailed. It's got you know, a bunch of different foods in there, coolers, cash register, uh, mailboxes over here for the... Uh, uh, apartments up above and the stairs going up and then when you get to the next floors there is an interior but they're pretty basic there's not much in there other than a fireplace some curtains on the windows yeah some <laughs> curtains on the windows it's a uh, bare bones living uh, but then this one here I know it's got a, a rug a clock a little uh, heater in there uh, but you don't have any like furniture or anything like that one of my favorite details is actually this sort of fire escape on the back which actually just has like Quite a few pieces, some interesting pieces here. It's like the old harpoon, underwater harpoon guns used as the kind of iron railings on that. So 
uh, it's easy to overlook that because it is on the back side of it, but a, a cool design there. Yeah, um, I do love that. And this is one where I really sort of feel like they started getting some interesting parts usage. Uh, we've got the hammers used for the railing up there. And then if I spin it around real quick, we've got uh, these sextants used for the bottom part of the lamps outside. And yeah, and then the harpoon guns as well for the railing in the back, some great stuff. So a couple very iconic early modular buildings, but now we go much, much older here to this next set. And this really caught my eye when I was walking around the store because <laughs> you don't see sets from this era that often. No, you so don't. what is the story of how this got to the store and the story of this set? Um, so this is a set from 1966 um, and it's, what sets were back in the day. I mean, they basically were just kind of like the classic boxes of, of now, but they were just uh, basic pieces, some windows. There's a... Uh, kind of plastic dividers, or is that paper? Yeah, plastic? it's plastic, okay. yeah. Uh, there's some of the old wheels that had the little metal pegs they would go in there. And that was how you attach them. Uh, this was actually... Um, uh, Friend found this at a, I think it was a garage sale or an estate sale or something like that, um, and picked it up. Um, it's not 100% complete, but uh, it's fun to look at how far the Lego sets have come. This was from the Samsonite era. If you look right here, it says a quality product of Samsonite Corporation, and that was out in Colorado, where when Lego, Lego had a factory in Colorado uh, for some, or actually it was Samsonite that had the factory and right. made, made Lego products there. But always an interesting era, and I guess what we're finally kind of getting another factory in the U.S. with the one in Virginia that's going to be yeah. opening up yeah. the next couple of years here. So it's interesting, kind of coming full circle there again. They'll, they'll probably have a little bit better quality control. <laughs> <laughs> so is this set uh, specifically for sale in the store, or do you keep some stuff just kind of on display, almost as museum pieces? Um, this one here, I just have for display. Okay. Um, it's Honestly, it's not worth a whole lot. Like I looked it up and I don't think it was worth even 20 bucks. And so <laughs> it was worth more as a, hey, look at this cool thing uh, than for trying to sell it, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. But no, it is really cool that you were able to kind of preserve that piece of history. Coming a little newer here, this is from 1991, the custom rally van here. Uh, the model team uh, theme, which I think brought us, what, a number of different types of vehicles was yeah. kind of made, what made up that theme? Yeah, model team really is like the precursor to the creator expert cars that we've been getting, you know. The, yeah. The Porsche of somewhat recently, the Austin Martin, you know. Uh, but this was, yeah, early 90s. It's got a lot of fun little details. It opens up, yep, the tire up there does the steering. Oh, okay, got, oh, that's yeah. right, yeah, there you go. So you use the tire. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I don't know, I've never played around with this one before. And I guess, let's see, the doors open on yeah. the side. You can see kind of doors. the red interior seats. And then uh, this will flip open for the side there. And it's got a lot of fun little details, like exhaust pipes and front windshield wipers and the side mirrors. And, and it looks like there were kind of some alternate designs as well. If you look more like a semi-truck type design and some of these other types of vehicles on the back here. Yeah, this was in the area where Lego would throw alt builds onto the back of their boxes with no instructions. <laughs> you know, it was like, they were like advertising that you could build whatever you want out of it, but some people were annoyed that there weren't directions for some of those cool alt builds. This artwork is very interesting behind here as well. Very sort of subdued colors, almost like town model trees in the yeah. background. Uh, that, that is interesting. I do, um, I do love a lot of the artwork from the 90s where they would do like almost uh, like model train scale yeah. layouts and put the sets there and stuff. That's really cool. Now I like just kind of the yellow uh, color scheme as well. It really makes it stand out with the red seats inside. Yeah, no, it's a great set. Now coming to uh, much more recent years, we've got a couple sets from the uh, AFOL designer program by Bricklink. So this is the original run of sets before Lego bought Bricklink, right? Correct, yep. Um, and on these first runs, they did uh, up to 5,000 copies of each set. Uh, the current runs have, I think, 30,000 copies. Uh, so these ones were much more limited. Um, but yeah, great great sets for fun designs. Uh, we got this uh, treasure map one uh, that is 3D interactive map with a little micro-scale pirate ship. 
It's designed by Jake Sadovich, who's actually signed the set uh, yep. there as well. But uh, a builder that we've featured uh, many times on Beyond the Brick over the years and just has done some really, really cool designs. So it was great to see uh, him involved with this. This was also the original run that had uh, Boone Langston's fire truck. Yep. So some people might remember that as well. Yep. And then I believe this was a Jonas Cram design. Correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah. the saloon here. So uh, another really talented builder. And uh, I have the set. Uh, Western has always been one of my all-time favorite themes. And uh, I have this set back in the studio. And I think it's just really impressive. So Yeah, I, I absolutely love this one. It's a great one. One of the other things I love about this particular early run is... The boxes are so fun. <laughs> They've got this glossy black versus matte black for with the Very Bricklink premium logo. Feeling, yeah. And then the inside of these here would have uh, images printed so you could build up the <laughs> set and then use this as a backdrop for your saloon or uh, like the map one has like an ocean seascape printed out and they really went all out on these first run for productions. Yeah, and I mean, it obviously worked because we've gotten several more runs since then. They're continuing yeah, yeah. to do sets now, so it's been great to see them continuing to kind of provide a, a different product than just the official LEGO products that we're used to. It is It is nice. It's also nice to see uh, these ones stay much closer to the uh, fan designs than LEGO ideas. Those ones get a little bit more uh, in-depth of a remake. Exactly. Now, going a little further back in time, we go back to 2001, and I believe this is the original run of the Lego Harry Potter theme here. We, of course, have the train, and then the uh, station here, you've got a little on the back. It says even King's Cross there on the back, and it's interesting, kind of similar uh, uh, with Star Wars as well, to look at some of these like now iconic themes and what they looked like when Lego first brought them out. Yes, there, there definitely has been a massive move uh, <laughs> towards accuracy and detail, uh, particularly in Harry Potter and Star Wars. But uh, there was a lot of fun stuff, a lot of just kind of, I don't know, maybe it's just a nostalgia, but some, some great things that they did back in the day. And you, of course, have the yellow minifigs here, and I believe there is kind of a playable. Does this spin? Yep. Yeah, so, this, so you've got the cart down here with the, the suitcases and the book in it, and then this spins on the bottom, so you can kind of recreate the play features there from the, the movies and books. And then of course you got your nine and three quarters sign there as well. Yeah. Um, and then the, the train opens up, I believe. Uh, so you can, uh, there we go. You can, uh, you got the owl in there and you can put people inside. There's some, also Ron's rat is inside. Yeah, and then it looks like it's got the magnetic connectors there and a little bit of detail on the interior of the train as well. But uh, just kind of like a fairly, like you said, basic design with just the train wheels going on here and you just like, there lo lots of studs exposed. Yeah, yeah, well it's actually, those are the, the older car wheels with no tires on That's them. That's true, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it is always cool to see where these themes start out, so it's been great that we've continued to get, yeah, so many, so many Harry Potter sets and continued to, just like with Star Wars, you kind of see different iterations of some of these designs have come over the years. Yeah, I, and I love, I love being able to compare the new and the old, but also it's just kind of fun to see, see where stuff has come, and uh, they, they both have their, their merits, you know. There's, there's some great charm in the simplicity, classic style of these, and there's some excitement with, you know, the newer, bigger, <laughs> more detailed designs, too. This final product we have is something very different here. So what is the, the story behind this? Uh, so this is a South Korea exclusive item. Um, this was done in conjunction between Lego and South Korea Toyota. And it was a, it was a program to try to bring awareness for more sustainable uh, travel and kind of a greener uh, form of transportation. Okay, interesting, yeah. So the, the regional exclusives with LEGO sometimes are, especially when it's like corporations being involved is always interesting. Yeah, and I believe this one was a, uh, it was for a convention, if I remember correctly. And it's a, it's a magnetic figure. It's got magnets on there and then a sticker for the torso. Uh -oh. And then there's a couple of different, um, different background cards with different images that can go uh, slide inside, I think, or maybe it's just a sticker. So it's almost on. like a business a card sticker. holder type idea. Yeah. A bit. yeah. 
Very cool. Yeah. So how, how did this end up in the store here? Um, it was just something that came in on trade. There's uh, someone who had brought in three or four exclusive items from South Korea. They okay. had an ex uh, some keychains and a couple other things. So clearly they had been there and picked some stuff up. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it was really cool. So you've got an incredible array of products just that we've shown off here today, going back from the 1960s to today. Big Star Wars modulars, Harry Potter, lots of neat stuff. But this is just a small selection of what the store has to offer. So for everyone watching, uh, if you're in uh, the Vancouver, Washington area, the Portland area, definitely make sure you stop in at the store here. For people who uh, can't make it in, do you sell online at all? Or where can people kind of follow you online to keep up to date with what you're doing? Um, so we don't generally sell stuff online. Uh, we have our Facebook page and we have our Instagram account and uh, we've got our email list and that's where we'll put out uh, sales or like new stuff coming in, like whenever we get some really interesting figures in and stuff like that, they're all blasted out on the social media and on the email form and people can see what we got and see what we got going on. Perfect. We'll make sure to link to all that in the description of the video. And we've actually featured Kevin as a mock builder on Beyond the Brick several times. So if you haven't seen some of his really incredible builds, you can actually see some of those on display here in the store as well. Some of those custom displays that he's worked on. So check those out. Come on in, mention you saw him on Beyond the Brick, and then check out all the cool products that they have to offer here at the store. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you.